My favorite parts of my small group experience was being able to get together with a group of people from all different backgrounds and all different walks of life and hear about what's going on in each other's lives. I really liked being able to dig into studying the Word of God and talking about different aspects of our lives and what Jesus speaks on them has been really impacting for me. Being in a small group to help me um, see Christ in my everyday life more and be able to dive into the Word more deeply with other people who are l just being learners um, of the Word and trying to follow Christ's example. Getting in a small group almost immediately really connected me with people all over the church and all over the city. Those same relationships have really been meaningful. They're the ones that I've leaned on in hard seasons in life. They're the ones that I call when there are joys in my life. And they're the people that I look forward to seeing every Sunday um, and even outside of church. Um, being able to see them around town and have familiar faces in the community has been super helpful. If you're not sure if you want to join a small group or not, I would definitely encourage you to pray about it. I do not think you would regret it. We have small groups at Celebration Church for everyone in every walk of life. And so I would definitely encourage you to take that list of small groups and pray on it and ask God to open up your heart into which group that you should join for this semester. I promise you there are people that are so willing and eager to minister to you, to encourage you, and your presence is just as needed as their presence. Being able to have you there will encourage people and bless people that you do not even know about. It's going to completely transform your walk with Christ as well as your church experience here at Celebration Church. Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, let's try that one more time. Good morning, everybody. Y'all sure look mighty good today. I'll tell you what, 1130 is coming on. Y'all looking good, good, good today. I'm glad to be worshiping with you. Loved, loved our worship time. How many of you enjoyed the, 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 just the time we had in God's presence today? I, I love that third song that we sang. I hope you did. Um, that's another one of the songs that kind of came out of our own house here, out of our own church, um, through our worship team. And... Man, that just blessed me so much. My, my son Austin wrote that one, so I was just kind of double blessed by that. But um, you can um, thank, thank the Lord for, for the ministry gifts that our team has and what a great blessing they are to our, to our church. So hey, let me mention a couple of things while you get in your worship guide, get your notes out. Also, get your small group list out if you've not already signed up for a group. I didn't look around to see how many of you had registered when Savannah said, had you registered for a small group, but she seemed to be excited, so most, that must mean a lot of you have. I do know that, that somewhere around 300 or more prior to today had signed up for groups, so that's, that's really a great start, but we're really believing that one of these days we'll have a semester where everybody that comes on Sunday is a part of a small group because of how important that it is to us. So you still have another week to get registered for a group, actually even beyond next Sunday, but that's when they start. We hope you'll start the semester strong with us. Hey, a couple other things I need to mention that are happening at Celebration. Next Sunday night is another men's night. I know we had an awesome response last end of the last year when we did the men's night. We're believing for another great men's night next Sunday night. Uh, going to be great food, great time together, great word. And so I want to encourage you, men, if you've not gotten signed up, get signed up for that. Let us know you're coming. We need to know so we can plan for you. Also, marriage conference is just three short weekends away. Um, get registered for that as well, couples. We want you to be a part of that. 
One more time, I'll remind you at the close of service, we would love it if you'd come up front, meet some of the small group leaders, and just connect with some people. Take a few minutes to do that. They've got snacks again for you to entice you to be there. So, hey, a little um, appetizer for your lunch. So, hey, I encourage you to do that. All right, let me have a word of prayer with you as we get started. Again, if you've not taken your notes out, go ahead and do that. I want to talk to you one more time this week about my church and about relationships. And I forgot to tell First Service this, but... You really, really don't want to miss next Sunday. It's going to be very special. I'm going to leave it at that. But it's going to be something really different and very special that we're going to do that I believe is really going to encourage you and minister to your heart. So be here. It'll be an awesome Sunday to bring somebody with you. Let me have a prayer with you now. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we come before it right now with um, a sense of, of honor. We honor your word in our lives. We, we, Jesus, you, you came to earth as the word made flesh to dwell among us. And we thank you, Lord, that as we come before your word, we're, we're coming before your presence. And as we come before your presence, we want to come humbly. We want to submit ourselves to what you say. So, Lord, as I bring uh, the word that you've given to me um, for these incredible people today... God, I pray that our lives are touched and your transformation process in us is, is, is moved forward. Um, Lord, as you're, as you're working in us, I, I see the beauty of your work, Lord, across this room today. And I'm so grateful. And we just ask you, Lord, just continue to do what you do. And we thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're week four in a series that has been built on Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, where Jesus says that I'm going to build my church. So um, we, we, I won't go back again and give you the context for that except just to say he's responding to Simon Peter and Simon Peter's revelation that he's the Christ, he's the Messiah, he's the son of the living God, he's the one who's come to save. Jesus says it's upon that revelation that I'm going to establish or I'm going to build a church. And here's the promise we have that when we are doing what he calls us to do, when we are building, well, we're human so we'll never do it perfectly, but when we are really about the business of, of humbly and, in, and intentionally trying to build what, what Jesus says in his word, he wants built when we do that the very powers of hell cannot conquer it there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop the church of God the work of God the things that God wants to do so I don't know about you but I want to be in the center of what he's doing I want to be in the center of what he's building through his church so so one of the things that that I really built on last week was was the theme that my church is relational that's your first blank go ahead and fill that in my church is relational why do I why do I pull that out? Well, if if I look at scripture beginning with the establishing of the early church in the book of Acts, I see the things that the church began to do. You can't read Acts chapter 2 verse 42 through 47 and not see that the church was incredibly relational. They're they're in each other's houses. They're they're breaking bre bread together. They're having meals together. They're worshiping together. They're, they're, it was very, very relational from the very beginning. And then you can't help but see, if you look through the writings of the Apostle Paul, you can't help but see how that he um, over and over gave direction or instructions on how the body was to encourage one another, minister to one another, be there for each other, bear with each other, forgive each other. There's just this over, um, th this focus on not only our relationship to God, but that there was just clearly no question that the, that the people of God would be in relationship with one another. There was never, nowhere in scripture is there the idea that church is just coming to an event that happens on Sunday. I'm going to let that kind of settle just for a minute before I move on. As a matter of fact, I just need to say it again because some of y'all are like, what? what did you say? I said there's nothing in Scripture that speaks to the idea that the church is just coming to an event on Sunday. We come together. It is an opportunity for us to fulfill a, a very clear command of Scripture that we worship. And, and Scripture is clear that we worship together. But we want to also recognize, hey, that's just part of the body or the family. Let's call it the family of God, the body of Christ. And, and, and so there's so much more that is not just vertical in, in, its, in its impact in our life, but it's horizontal. 
and it has to do with each other. So, so that's what I want us to see again today. My church is relational. Jesus church, Jesus church is a place where we nurture an atmosphere where relationships are highly valued, that we create an atmosphere. Can I tell you that our, our staff team every week is about the business of, of creating this atmosphere. We, we are interested in you being connected. We are interested in you being a part. We're interested in, because we, we really take that responsibility um, very strong. It's, it's very um, heavy on us as a team that we create intersecting places for people, um, for, for Christ's work of transformation to continue to happen in our hearts. So I, I, as I was even thinking about this, I, I really just thought, you know, I want to take a minute and thank everyone who's involved in leadership in the small group ministry. This semester, 75 people who are the leading or co-leading. Um, there are also hub leaders. There are coaches. There's part of our staff, of course, Mariah, that leads it, but that others on our staff team that, that oversee this ministry. I want to thank every one of you for creating something that is very biblical, very scriptural, very godly for all of us to be able to be a part of. It is, it is how that we value relationships. It's the atmosphere that we create. We know that a church is most effective when you are caring for each other, when you're a part of one another's lives. And I've watched and I've seen how small groups have fulfilled that. I've watched as you've celebrated births in families, as you've mourned losses in families together. Um, we've, we've watched as you visit one another, as you um, help one another with financial needs. It's one of the great blessings when we hear, hey, we're wanting to help um, them. They have this thing coming up and this thing happening, and can we do that? And when we see the family of God just working, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, and, and just watching as people are just seeing to it that people aren't walking out their relationship with Christ alone, that we recognize, hey, this is, this is done best when we do this together. As imperfect as we are as, as, as humans, it's better when we do it together. So it's really the why behind small groups. It's our highest priority is to see you become a fully devoted follower of Christ, that you're not only connecting in relationship with God, but you're connecting in relationship with each other. Again, I told you in the beginning that Scripture really points us to this theme that, that the church that Jesus is building is relational. Here's a verse where the Apostle Paul, speaking to a group of believers in one city, he says to them, look, you're members of God's very own family. You're not just part of a church family, but you're members of God's family. And by virtue of the fact that you're a member of God's own family, what does he say? He says, you belong in God's house. Everybody say that. You belong in God. Why don't you make it personal and say, I belong. Say it. I belong in God's house. And you do. You, you, you belong. And it's not just a, oh, I belong there. I really need to be there. It is, I, I really can connect there. It's God's plan. It's his intention that I connect in the church. I belong in God's household with every other Christian. So relationships are what life is made of. It's important that you are given the opportunity to build strong, healthy, wonderful relationships, and, and that happens. And when it does, it enriches our own destiny and life. It helps us to fulfill um, our, 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 our own um, callings in life and, and really have the kind of full, satisfying life that God intends for us to have. And this is why we're encouraging every one of you to get more connected, to take one step further in terms of relationship with God because you're the product of those relationships. So I thought I would um, give you, today I'm just going to call it kind of a relationship sur survey. I've, I've, I've hit these um, themes in the past in, in some different ways. Uh, I asked the Lord because they're just so important, they're so practical, they're so right. I, I, I thought, Lord, give me, a, give me a fresh edge to them, give me something new for them. And, and I hope that you sense that at the same time, these are just good, healthy, consistent reminders from God's Word about relationships. Come on, anybody here just ever need to be reminded? 
It's kind of like I, I need someone to tell me what's going to happen tomorrow. You know what the schedule is because we need to be reminded. We knew, but we forgot. We knew, but it kind of just got buried under some things. I'm going to remind you today of some things that Scripture says about our relationships. A little bit of a, of a survey, if you will, uh, for the first part of the message. One more Scripture before I get into the questions. Proverbs 27, 19 just so clearly says this. A mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the kinds of friends he chooses. You think that's true? I think that's true. I was invited to a, um, a family celebration event for a family that I had not known very long, but they had people there that they had known for 40 and 50 and 60 years, and I felt like in the matter of just a couple of hours that I knew everything I needed to know about these people that I'd only known for a short time. For one reason, because of the friends they had chosen to do life with. That, that happens a lot of times um, where we, and it's true because scripture says it's true, but it says what we're really like is shown by the kind of people that we do life with, the people we surround ourselves with. For every single one of us, there, there are three different kind of people that we're going to interact with um, in our life many times on a daily basis. And I say this especially today for, for, for young people, for young adults, and, and even for our teenagers to, to really connect with recognizing that every relationship in your life isn't intended to be a lifelong relationship. And there may be at times, and every person here that's over 30 or 40 knows what I'm saying right now is true, there are relationships that may have been wonderful in a season of your life, but they wouldn't be wonderful anymore. They wouldn't be right anymore. You're going to interact with three different kinds of people. Some people who are where you used to be. How many of you know what I'm talking about already? They're where you used to be. And, and, and now you're, you're around them, you're with them, and you still love them, and you have an affection or an affinity for them, you care about them, but it becomes increasingly clear that they're not where you are now, they're where you used to be. Okay, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us about these kinds of relationships. Another kind of relationship that is wonderful is identifying people who are going where you're going. How many of you know what I'm talking about there? It's kind of like maybe you came to church or maybe you found a co-worker at work. It's kind of like, there's somebody here that, that understands me that's going where I'm going. They, they have the same kind of values that I have. They care about some of the same things that I care about. I can do life with them. They, they may not have arrived yet, but I can, I can hitch up with them and we can do life together. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? You, you've had those experiences. And then finally, there are going to be people who are already in the place where you want to be. Right? You're going to mostly make these kinds of, not always, but you're going to a lot of times make those kind of relationships in the church family. They're going to be people that may be a generation older than you. It's the reason scripture talks about the old, an older generation teaching a younger generation because if they've, if they've done life well, they've already gotten somewhere where you want to be. The Holy Spirit, the Lord wants you to identify people like that so you can begin to connect your life with, with people. I, I know for me personally, some of my strongest relationships are in that category. There are still people, even though I'm 58 years old, there are people who are where I want to be. They're, they're already where, I, they're already where I, I want to be, and I can realize I can connect my life to them. I can, I can do life with them, and my life is better when I, when I do. So every one of these potential relationships, they create a choice for us. And the choice that you make really becomes an indicator that's going to define in some way what you're going to be like in the future, where your life is heading. Um, good relationships in your life, they're not going to just come to you by chance. They're not going to happen by accident. You're probably not going to connect with that person that maybe you identified from a little bit of a distance. You know, I really look at their relationship with God or, or how well they've done in business. I want to know what their ethics were. I want to know how they handled things. I, I, whatever that area is where you say they're where I want to be, the Holy Spirit will help you, but it's not going to happen by chance or accident. You're going to have to deliberately choose to cultivate, uh, intentionally to cultivate those relationships. So here are the four questions. And, and I really want you, even as I ask the questions, 
to say in, in your own heart to say, you know, God, is there anything you want to talk to me about in this area of my life? With your relationships, every one of us, regardless of our age, regardless of where we are in life, we would benefit, I think, annually from taking this little survey, approaching these four questions. Here's the first question. What important relationship do I need to nurture? What important relationship in my life do I need to nurture? 1 Peter 4, 7, and 8 says this. And it, and it helps us to put a focus to that question. The end of all things is, is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled. Um, get, get intentional. Get, get yourself focused. Recognize that, that, that life is, is not just a, a kind of a case or sirrah, whatever will be, will be. It's just going to kind of happen, and I'm going to have a good time. And really, the goal of my life is just to have a good time. No, gr- grow up. Um, become clear-minded. Become self-controlled so that you can pray, so that you can recognize immediately where he goes is, above all, love each other deeply. Be clear-minded. Be self-controlled. Recognize there are going to be some relationships that you need to lean into. There are going, there's going to be, there are some people right now in your life that you need to nurture the relationship with them. Maybe you've said, you know, I would really like to get to know them. I think they could add value to my life. I think that, that maybe there is a part of their story that would intersect, intersect with my story. And if I got connected with them, y'all, it's not going to happen by chance. You've got to choose to lean into those kind of relationships. To, to, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a family that, that is parented well. And you look at them and you say, hey, I want to grow from them. I want to learn from them. I, wanna, I want to, um, I, I see some things that that they did that I want to emulate in my own parenting whatever it is maybe it's financially whatever area it is in your life hook up with the right people in your life so that you're able to get um, focused and get intentional about relationships so it's it's really what's important it's for you to say look what relationship am I neglecting right now that I need to nurture Um, What relationship am I not pouring effort into that I need to become more intentional about nurturing? Y'all, it's a two-way street. I won't spend much time here, but I want you to see that at all times, if, if you're really in the right place relationally, if you're focused, you're clear in what God wants, I don't care where you are in your relationship with God, there's always going to be somebody that he's wanting you to lift up, and there's always going to be somebody to lift you up. There's always going to be an opportunity. You say, I don't have it all together yet. That's fine. That's okay. You're going to have an opportunity at work or in your family or in some other situation or some other environment. Uh, the Holy Spirit will prompt you. You're going to say, I'm just going to encourage them. I'm just going to lift them up. I'm going to pour into this relationship. I'm going to try to nurture a relationship here because I know that God has put something in me that can be a blessing to them. How many of you have ever felt that before in any relationship? You know what that's like to, to feel that. Obey, obey that prompting in your heart. That, that's probably the Holy Spirit leading you. But also recognize that you never in your life are going to arrive at a place where you, never need, where you don't need someone else to pour into your life and to build you up. Every one of us do. I need it. I need it regularly. I know when I don't have it the way that I should have it. And, and we need that. So we're going to love one another deeply, recognizing that that love, that relationship, that unconditional Christ-like environment covers a multi- multitude of sins. So here, th- this is what we want. We want to nurture relationships that will allow God to be more glorified in our lives. Here's the second one. What broken relationship do I need to restore? I know this has probably never happened to anybody, but maybe you'll be able to help somebody else down the road with this. Uh, maybe they had a, a, a rift with someone and there's, a, there's a, a division and maybe it festered. How many of you know that sometimes things can turn into a lot more than they really even started as? That's because the enemy hates for you to be in good relationship with people. And he'll take any of the tiniest little open door 
to pour in an offense or to take an opportunity to divide you. That's understanding that truth and that reality is all the more reason for us to, to be focused, for us to be intentional and recognize I'm going to uh, make a decision that this is a year where I'm going to see if there's any relationships in my life that need to be restored. Maybe it's just kind of a little ongoing thing right now that you want to recognize that Scripture calls on us to bear with one another, to forgive whatever grievances that we may have with another. Yeah, but they did this. No, no, no. Forgive them. How? Just as the Lord has forgiven you. So this really high bar gets set for how we um, refuse, uh, how we should refuse to hold on to an offense or, or carry a grievance. And, and every one of us, am I right? Every one of us have been offended and every one of us have been the offender, right? Hello? <laughs> it's a, sometimes it's just a little confession good for the soul, you know? Um, we've been the offender and we have been the offended. How about we as, as people of faith, as people of God, because let me tell you, you say like, what, you know, Pastor, you're talking about our relationships and small groups and moving forward. Can I tell you, moving forward is really hard when you're really just dragging some stuff behind you and you're trying, you're going into your small group and you're dragging your bags of offense and, and, and carrying the, the problems of, of relationships past and stuff. You know, those things are going to have a way, to show up, a way of showing up in that room, Right. And you keep carrying the past into the future. Why not make a decision that, that God, if it's within my power, I, I'm going to restore something that's broken. You're not always able to do it, but you can make a decision as, as much as it has to do with me. As much as it has to do with me, as far as I'm concerned, you are forgiven. As, as far as I'm concerned, that, that grievance, I don't, I'm not carrying that anymore. As far as I'm concerned, I want you to know that I'm really sorry that I, that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I offended you. I want you to, to accept my apology and, a, and, and accept my offering of, 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 of saying that, that I repent to you for what I did. As much as it has to do with me, I'm going to restore what is broken. So, so why don't you... Think about right now, just for a second, because I know the Holy Spirit has probably already brought it to a lot of our minds. Maybe it's a little thing. Maybe it's a bigger thing. Maybe, maybe it's so big that you even need to get a little bit of counsel about how to exactly approach it. That's fine. Talk, talk to somebody who's more mature than you as a Christian. I, I don't know why I'm giving this instruction. Maybe I'm giving it for someone today. But maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're thinking, I, I get it, but there's just no way. It's too complicated. It's too difficult. It's been too long. If the Holy Spirit's prompting your heart, get some counsel um, from someone more mature than you in, in the faith and, and, and make a decision. I don't want to carry that anymore. I, I want to put that behind me. I want to restore something that's broken. Here, here's the third one, and, and um, it's really important. I, I talked with two different people after the first service that brought this one up. What harmful relationship do I need to sever? Let me go ahead and give a disclaimer on the front end of this one. Some of you, as I get into this point, something in you is going to say, yeah, but pastor, what about evangelism? Aren't we supposed to evangelize people who are lost? The answer is a wholehearted yes, but that's not what I'm talking about right now, okay? We talk about it regularly. We want you to love people. We want you to, to reach people. We want you to live a godly example before people so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. They'll be drawn to the person that you are in Christ, and they're going to find Jesus. And if they find Celebration Church good enough too, but, but we, that's what we want. But that's just not what I'm talking about right now. So let's, let's take that and let's sit it here aside for a moment let's talk about if the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you about a harmful relationship that you need to sever a couple of scriptures that aren't in your notes the first one first Corinthians 15 33 says you don't need to be deceived don't be misled bad company corrupts good character what we need to see is that relationships are spiritual. Every relationship is spiritual. There's, there's something happening, some dynamic that goes beyond what you can see in every relationship. There are, there's either positive or there's negative happening. There's either good or bad. There's, there's either righteous or unrighteous. And there's a transferring that's happening in that relationship. And it is unavoidable because all relationships have a spiritual component to them. 
You're going to become increasingly like the people that you choose to do life with. So you have to make a decision. If I'm going to hang around with people who talk about the boss and who criticize in the workplace, and if they're going to be my best buddy, I just need to recognize that I'm going to be eaten from the tree of that fruit. And what happens in their life, it it, it, it could happen in mine. If I hang around with critical people, with negative people, if if I connect my life with people who are just foolish, they have no accountability in their life, I need to recognize I'll probably eat of the fruit of that relationship with them. And I understand you can say, well, Pastor, they've just been my best friend since high school, and what if I hurt their feelings? I mean, I've kind of recognized it wasn't a good relationship anymore, but what if I hurt their feelings? Let me just say to you, what if they keep you from your destiny in Christ? What if that relationship is one that hinders you more than you're able to reach that person, more than you're able to impact them, that it's something that keeps you. Can I tell you that Scripture is very clear. There are people that live certain ways that Scripture says you avoid them. You, you don't do life with them. It's, it's a scriptural principle. If you want to do life with encouraging people, positive people, people who are blessed, people who see what's right and not just what's wrong, people who are responsible, guess what? You're going to experience the joy of eating from the fruit of that tree, of that relationship. Proverbs 13, 20 is very clear. It says the person who walks with the wise grows wise. You can add multiple implications to that. Um, People who walk with people who are favored and they do life with people who are blessed. I believe that blessing comes to us. It, 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 It impacts our life in some way. But it goes on to say the person who is a companion of foolish people, they're going to suffer harm. So what relationship is hindering you from growing? What relationship is maybe an emotional affair at this point, but you know that it could go further than it is right now. It could lead to something that you know would keep you from God's plan in your life. It would even bring you into an incredible place of compromise in your life um, to to things that are clearly against God's word, things that are sinful. Where is the relationship relationship that the Holy Spirit is saying to you, don't be mean, don't be ugly, don't go in there holier than thou and self-righteous or anything like that, but you begin to step back from that because you recognize they're not going where I'm going. Their, their life isn't connected to, um, to, to righteousness the way my life is being connected to righteousness. Again, it's, not, be- it's about, not about being better than anybody else, but it's about recognizing if I'm going to get to the place where I can truly impact people's lives, where I can truly make a difference, where I'm truly strong enough to reach into any situation and help people, even those people that maybe I left behind for a little while, for me to go back and reach them, it's going to mean that for a season I have to step away. So, so what relationship, what, what, what relationship needs to be severed? Um, two final scriptures and I'll move on. Proverbs 12, 26, the righteous man is cautious in relationships. You're not called to everyone. You're not called to every situation. A righteous person is cautious in their relationships. Second, some of you have never heard this before. I had one guy nearly 80 years old tell me on the way out he'd never heard anybody talk about this in church. Pastor, we're just supposed to love everybody, love everybody. No, scripture teach, there's some scripture here, y'all, that we need to understand when it comes to our relating and our relationships. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what does righteous, what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness. You apply this inside or outside the family of faith, but you recognize there are some relationships that, that I might need to deal with in my life and handle in a different way. Here's the final Final survey question. Um, I hope somebody took some notes on that one and that you're thinking, you know, Lord, what do I need to do in this relationship? Here's the final one. What meaningful relationship do I need to initiate? A little bit different than the nurture one. This is recognizing that there are people I don't know yet that might be the key to a prayer that I'm praying. You're praying vertically for God to help you in an area of your life where God may want to horizontally bring someone into your life that you don't even know their name yet could be, that could be strategic in you seeing a breakthrough in your life. Did you just hear what I said? It, it may be somebody who's on the same journey with you, going where you're going, that you do life with. It may be somebody that's at another place in your life where you just have to kind of move past your fears and maybe just walk up to someone at church and say, hey, I just think you're somebody I'd like to get to know right? 
I think there's, I think you may, God may have put something in you that I need in my life. What relationship do I need to initiate that would be meaningful? Um, Hebrews 10.25, we use it in the context of church, and it, I think that's right. It's okay to say us coming together on Sunday, you know, let's not give up meeting together. But, but look what he says here. Um, he says, don't, don't give up getting together. Don't, don't give up connecting with people. Um, some people would be in the habit of doing that. And boy, if that was ever written for a day, it's written for today. Um, we can get in the habit of some isolation, and it's just easier to be alone. We kind of got used to some things that probably weren't healthy to be. They weren't probably. I think every person, secular and Christian, would say the same thing. It wasn't healthy. Y'all with me? We've not been in a healthy time for going on two years in terms of relationship. It's time for people of faith to turn the, turn, turn, just turn the tide on that. Um, to recognize that, that, hey, I need people. I, I need to meet with people. I need to initiate some relationships. I'm 58 years old, but y'all, I haven't met all the people yet that I need in my life. I don't know all of them yet. There's some people that God's still wanting to bring into my life in relationship that I can grow from, that I can learn from, that I can, that I can um, uh, experience some things that God has for me. There are some people that I can initiate relationship with that God has put some things in me that they desperately need. Let's not give up meeting together, as is the habit of some, but let's encourage one another. And I love the way Hebrews 10.25 ends. It says, and all the more as we see the day, capital D, the day of the Lord approaching. How many of you see the day of the Lord approaching? Sure we do. I don't know how long it will be. None of us know a day or an hour, but we know the signs of the times are all around us, that the day of the Lord is approaching. All the more, don't give up relationships. Don't give up nurturing. Don't give up initiating relationships that God wants you to have in your life. Let me close quickly with four thoughts. Um, four thoughts for you that, that I just kind of have as little points of focus or proclamations um, as Jesus Church. How many here are part of Jesus Church? I mean, you, some of y'all like, I, I, just, I'm, I think I'm barely in, but I'm in. I'm in the family, right, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the family, and, and it's, it's kind of one of those deals. If you're in, you're all the way in, right? Aren't you thankful for that? Uh, no second class, no um, nothing like that. We're, we're in. As Jesus' church and as a member of his family, here's what I want to do. I want to develop my relationship with my church. I want, to, I want to encourage you in that. Ephesians 2.19 says this. Again, we, we looked at the scripture earlier. You are members of God's very own family. And you belong in God's household with, with all the other Christians. You know, it's time for some of you to say, and I understand baggage from the past. I, I honestly do personally. Okay, I personally know what it's like to, to, to be hurt. I know what it's like to be disappointed by people. I know what it's like to feel let down. That's a human experience. I think that every one of us have felt that, haven't we? It's time for some of you to say, today's the day that I'm going to reject the lies that have said I'm unloved. I'm going to reject the lies that say I'm, I'm not acceptable or I'm un, unaccepted. And I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to move past and reject the lies that say, well, I'm really not valued. Um, today's the day where I'm going to take ownership of my life rather than being a victim of, of life. And I'm going to step into God's house and God's families like I own the place. I tell people that all the time at Growth Track. I tell people at Growth Track when I get to be there and I get to do the Growth Track with people, I said, look, some of y'all, you, you've been here three months, you've been here six months, you've been here a year. I said, just start acting like you own the place. Man, get in there on Sunday, start greeting people, start loving on people. Hey, how long have you been here? Well, I've been here 12 years. How long have you been here? Two, two weeks, but I'm having a great time. I love this place, you know. Get in here, act like you own the place because you do. You're accepted in God's family. You belong in God's household with every other Christian. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Uh, you, you belong. Again, we're, we're, we're all a little rough around the edges and we don't get it all right all the time, but we got to recognize we belong to each other. We belong together. So we want to develop that relationship intentionally with the church. Don't wait for it all to come to you. Come to it. 
Come to us. Come to a small group. Um, I'm going to talk about teams in a second, but get connected. Here's the second one. Develop your relationship with godly friends. This is for us. You can do this a lot of ways in your life, but one of the ways we've helped you to do this is by getting you an environment in a living room or in a group a room here in the church building or somewhere else where you can be with some people and do life with them and they're not perfect either but there are people who are who are seeking after God seeking after God's heart you're going to develop a friendship with them and you're going to do life together I love what the young lady said on the on the testimony today doing life with people from all different backgrounds all kinds of walks of life different many of our groups are generationally different they're, they're different in many ways, but doing life together with godly friends. Acts 2.44 says all the believers met together constantly and shared everything with each other. Well, that was the very beginning. Do you realize Acts chapter 2? The very beginning of the church. And they were doing life together. They were always together, doing life together constantly. I, I want to encourage you. You say, I can't do it constantly. Can we just, though, make it part of our life? It's not just a Sunday thing. Church isn't just about being here for an hour and it's supposed to be an hour, but an hour and 10 minutes because a preacher preaches too long. Um, but, my, but my walk with God, is more, it's about more than that. It's about the people that I'm here. We belong to each other. I have a responsibility to you. You have a responsibility to each other. We're accountable. We're doing life together with godly friends. The third one, and I won't spend any time with this, but... J- Develop, develop your relationship with a team. Get plugged in. It's healthy. Every one of us that have a household, we know how a house is to, to, to function. I, hopefully, we know how a house is to function. And if you have a family, you're, you're raising up the kids to take responsibility in the home. Come on, somebody. If you're not, Angela and I are leading a parenting group, and we'll help you to do that. Um, seriously, the, the, the atmosphere of a home and a home that's not dysfunctional and that's working where everybody has a part, the very same principle applies in the church family. So where do you find yourself in that? Are you serving the family of God by, by, being, by developing a relationship with a team, not just filling a serve, but by recognizing, hey, I'm, I'm part of this. I'm, I'm connected to this family. I'm doing life with a team. Let's finish this la- uh, the scripture. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. The more we do together, we double our efforts. Here's the final one I want to give you, and, and it's just kind of taken us full circle on this idea of our relationship together and then our relationship. It all happens because of our relationship with God. Let's make this the year we say, God, I'm going deeper. I'm going to give you a couple of opportunities back to back in the month of February. I think I mentioned it last Sunday. We're going to dive deep for three weeks in the prophet Hosea. Three three weeks. And I, I, I can't tell you how much I have enjoyed reading it over and over, studying um, the themes of it, what, what, what would the Holy Spirit want to say to the church. We're going to follow that. You're going to love February 27th. I won't tell you about that yet. And then in March, we're going to take six weeks leading up to Easter, and we're going to, we're going to look at the book of Acts together. What was the early church like? What was it? The book of Acts. We're, we're going to have an opportunity to dive deep. Make this the year where you say, God, I really want to connect relationally with you. It's going to involve three things, and there's as simple as it can be. Spending time with God learning what he's like, and then just saying, God, I want to live my life doing what you do. I want to live my life doing the things that you did, Jesus, doing, making choices to be like you and to live like you. Here's the closing thought I didn't get to last week. I want to make sure I give it to you today. When it comes to our relationships, what we plant, we harvest. And I understand for some Probably for every one of us in, in some areas, maybe for some of you, it's kind of like I've been a real disaster. And when you see a statement like that, you just immediately go into prayer and fasting for crop failure. Um, <laughs> right? God, if I'm going to sow what I, if I'm going to reap what I've sown relationally, I, I need help. But come on, let's see a show of hands. That, for every one of us, that's true in some ways, isn't it? When it comes to places where we've not planted the right seed and have reaped a harvest that 
Can I tell you that today is today? And today is a day where you can begin to say, Lord, I'm going to plant some seed today that I'll look forward to reaping the harvest of. Galatians 6, 7 says, don't be deceived. God's not marked for, mocked for whatever one sows, that he will also reap. So, so here's the truth. In every relationship, every day, you're harvesting what you previously planted. I don't always like that. Right? But we might as well, we, we might as well face it that, that there's, some, there's some struggle there. But, but here's the part that I think gives us some hope. And we plant today, today, every day. Every day we plant what we will someday harvest. How will the Holy Spirit speak to you right now about your relationships in a way that will impact the seeds that you sow even the rest of today? Even the rest of today. What broken relationship did he speak to you about restoring? What can I do today to plant seed in that relationship? What relationship in your life have you neglected that you know there's something more there that God has for you to pour into someone or to receive from someone, but you've neglected it? What can you do today? What seed can you plant today that will create a harvest in your tomorrows? Where is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about relationships? And I want to challenge you, let today be today, this be the week that you get connected with us in a greater way, with your celebration family, through a small group. Close your eyes with me right now. Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that it's true, that it's powerful. Uh, Lord, you are perfect in every way. And I'm asking you right now, Lord, that your perfect Holy Spirit will speak to every heart today. Give us, God, give us the, the willingness to not just hear your word, but to be doers of your word. We don't want to... Um, we don't want to neglect, Lord, what you've spoken to our hearts today. So we ask you to help us. If you're, if you're here today with your eyes closed, you've either never made a commitment of your life to Christ or you have um, not really walked with the Lord the way that you know that you should, the way you want to in your heart, and you want to make today the day where you say, Lord, I'm committing my life to you. I want to pray with you. Will you just slip up your hand? I want to, I want to, um, yes, ma'am, I see you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Come on, anybody else? That's you today. I really want to get where I need to be with the Lord. Yes, sir, I see you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Real quick, that's you. Yes, sir. So many in this service right now that the Holy Spirit, isn't it beautiful when the Holy Spirit kind of prods people's hearts? Not kind of, but does. Can we just thank the Lord, everybody, right now? Let's just thank the Lord for moving. Lord, I thank you that, that your, your Holy Spirit has hovered over this service today. And it's in this atmosphere that you've drawn, Lord, probably close to a dozen people to say, I want to I I be fully committed to a life with Christ. Lord, as they begin that walk with you, Lord, as they step into that relationship with you today, God, I pray that you will help us to connect with them. And Lord, that as they connect with you, that we'll do life together. And Lord, our, our goal really is that six months from now, a year from now, we look back and we're just thankful, Lord, that you've changed us. Lord, that we may not be everything we want to be, but we're just so grateful that we're not who we used to be and that you've worked in our lives. Lord, we give you honor and glory for each one of these as you forgive their sins, wash away the past. Lord, help them to leave the guilt and the shame behind. And today... Lord, as they made this decision that they receive you as their Lord and their Savior, and they trust you as their Savior and as their Lord, we give you thanks for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.